Hello everyone, welcome to Diagnoser. This is the second video of our series for intracranial bleeds and uh, this is the CT scan and we are to discuss this uh, second type of intracranial bleed today. And uh, let me tell you, this is basically the subdural hematoma or subdural hemorrhage. Firstly, let me tell you about the CT finding and uh, basically this is the white colored area that you can see here. And this is more or less kind of a crescent shaped or you can say concave or convex kind of uh, this appearance and this is the uh, typical finding in this uh, subdural hematoma. Now let's discuss a bit about this uh, hematoma and uh, with this name we can see that uh, the bleeding that is in this subdural hematoma this is present below the dura mater and uh, as we have discussed in our uh, previous video about the coverings of the brain inside the first layer that is just above this uh, uh, brain parenchyma this is the pia mater and above this pia mater there is this arachnoid and above this arachnoid there is this two layers of dura mater. This is one layer and this is the second layer of dura mater. Uh, the inner layer is this visceral layer and outer layer is endosteal or parietal layer of dura mater. Now uh, here in this case of subdural hematoma, the bleeding is present between this uh, uh, dura mater and arachnoid mater. So the bleed is present in this space. And yeah, according to some books, there is no potential space that is present between the dura mater and arachnoid mater. Uh, this whole space is filled with uh, some kind of connective tissue. But yeah there is this subdural hematoma so that is why there is some kind of compartmentation that is also seen in this subdural hematoma and that compartmentation forms because of the bleeding in different compartments that are formed by that connective tissue that is present between this uh, dura and arachnoid mater and now about the bleeding the bleeding here is mostly venous and in the venous bleeding the bleeding is mostly uh, due to the bridging veins these are the veins that are present between this dura mater and arachnoid mater. As you know, between the two layers of dura mater, there are venous sinuses. And these bridging veins, these drains into this uh, dural venous sinuses. So when this vein crosses this arachnoid mater and uh, try to drain in this dura mater, then during the course, these veins are present in this uh, subdural space. So what happens is, due to some kind of injury or uh, trauma, uh, there is this shear stress over the brain. And what this shear stress means that, suppose this is the bridging vein. And this is the part of brain that is present below it. Uh, suppose this arachnoid matter and the pia matter and that brain parenchyma here. And this is the part above it, this dural venous sinuses. And the shearing stress on this bridging veins means that uh, the part that is below this, this moves in this direction and part that is above it, this moves in uh, this direction. Then there is opposite movement above this uh, bridging vein and below this bridging vein. So due to this opposing movement, there is stress over this bridging vein and due to that stretch, the bridging veins basically ruptures and due to the rupture of these veins, uh, the blood get collected between the subdural space. And the causes, I have already told you about the injury and trauma. Other causes are, in cases of infants, there is this uh, disease called as glutaric aciduria type 1. This is the disease in which this subdural hematoma is quite commonly seen. And uh, the other is this vascular malformations. And these vascular malformations can be present in any age group. So that is why uh, these are also the cause of uh, bleeding in this case of subdural hematoma. Now let's come to the clinical feature or basically the presentation. Well, uh, this presentation, the presentation of this subdural hematoma, this varies with age. And how this varies with age is that uh, in cases of child, and infants, it is due to injury that can be accidental or non-accidental injury and sometimes that shaken baby syndrome and also that glutaric aciduria that I have uh, told you and some kind of vascular malformations. These are the causes of the subdural hematoma in a child. Uh, in cases of young adults, the most common causes are these road traffic accidents and uh, some cases of trauma. The next is in elderly patients, the most common cause is trauma. But yeah, there is this one thing that the history of trauma is uh, not all the time present in the cases of uh, this subdural hematoma because uh, even a subtle trauma, very uh, little trauma to the head may lead to development of subdural hematoma in cases of adults and most of the time uh, these patients present after 10 to 15 days and the features of the presentation in the cases of elderly patients is this pseudo dementia and the patient will be having the symptom of dementia due to the uh, presence of subdural hematoma. So this is all about uh, this presentation part and now let's come to the diagnosis part. Well in the diagnosis the first investigation and the best investigation is the CT scan. And as you can see I have already told you the opacity that is seen in this CT scan is basically banana shaped opacity or sometimes we can call it as uh, the crescentric other is this concave convex. These kind of opacities are seen and uh, this is a subdural hematoma. And with this, uh, uh, with this kind of opacity, there is one more thing about this that in cases of acute condition, uh, this is hyperdense. And you can say that uh, uh, this hyperdense area, this more white colored as compared to the brain parenchyma. Uh, in cases of uh, subacute cases, subacute cases, this uh, subdural hematoma, this is more of uh, an isodense kind of appearance. 
so in cases of uh, sub acute type the diagnosis of the subdural hematoma is very difficult on the ct scan so in the cases of sub acute type the investigation that is preferred is this mri and in the chronic cases this is hypodense because of the liquefaction of the clot why this occurs because in the uh, cases of acute the blood is present and in the cases of sub acute the clot has formed uh, and in the chronic cases the clot has liquefied that leads to this uh, hypodense appearance so if this is appearing white colored then this is an acute subdural hematoma and if this is appearing as this kind of appearance uh, as similar to the brain parenchyma then it is sub acute subdural hematoma and if this is more of a black colored as compared to brain parenchyma then this is a chronic case of subdural hematoma and along with this kind of opacity we can also uh, see a kind of uh, displacement of the brain parenchyma this is called as a midline shift as you can see uh, this is the midline and you can see how the brain is shifted from the midline this is due to the pressure effect of this hematoma now why the opacity here is this banana shaped or crescentric kind of opacity well this is because uh, the space here is not limited by the suture lines so blood has more space to extravasate so that is why the appearance that it takes is this kind of this crescentric appearance so we have discussed about the diagnosis part about this appearance and uh, this midline shift that we can see here now let's come to the treatment part how the uh, patient of the subdural hematoma is treated well in cases of a very small subdural hematoma we can go for a monitoring and monitoring is done by serial cts because in cases of subdural hematoma that is very small this can uh, get absorbed by itself also so if the patient is asymptomatic and this subdural hematoma is very small and there is no midline shift present then we can go for monitoring via the serial ct but in cases of uh, subdural hematoma that is symptomatic or this is acute and causing a lot of symptom and it's, this is a large hematoma then we need to evacuate this hematoma and for the evacuation we need to go for this craniotomy and after the craniotomy we need to remove the uh, blood that is present here but there is one more thing in cases of chronic subdural hematoma we can go for burr hole craniotomy because in cases of chronic hematoma the blood that was present here that became clot and now the clot is liquefied so the liquefied clot can be removed by this burr holes easily but in cases of acute and subacute cases uh, the burr hole craniotomy cannot be used craniotomy is the only option for large symptomatic hematoma so this is all we have to discuss about the subdural hematoma if you have any questions regarding this then do post it in the comment section below or you can dm me on my instagram handle at diagnose it and don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel thank you